I was born in Fort Collins, Colorado, but my dad was a, a machinist and uh, the airline industry was just taking off. So we all moved to California, I think in about 19, this is gonna sound very old, <laughs> 52, I believe. Anyway, um, we lived there for however many years, went to grade school, high school, and uh, I was a senior in high school, and I think it was maybe just about three weeks before graduation, and we had a career day. And I still didn't think about being a nun. I didn't think about being anything, actually. So my mom said to me, you know, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I really don't know. And she said, well, you know, if, if you're going to be interested in joining a community, you've got to do something. I mean, it's not just going to come down the pike. So I thought, oh, well, okay. So I was looking around at this career day. The Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament couldn't make it that day. We had, we had three or four different communities that taught us. We were in a new high school, St. Bernard High School in Playa del Rey. So those sisters, the Immaculate Hearts and St. Joe's and all were there. But on the corner of their table, they had a packet of uh, Mission Fields at Home, which was our magazine. I think I walked by it the first time, but then, you know, I decided, well, maybe I should, you know, because it was Mission Fields at Home. I kind of wanted to be a missionary, but I didn't want to go to Africa or, you know, China. So I said, well, I didn't even know if there was a community that, that were missionaries at home or in the United States. But what I didn't realize was that we really were a missionary community in the United States because teaching the Indians and the Black people was a missionary endeavor. What I didn't realize, I did write after information and uh, I didn't realize at the time, but the mother general was the one corresponding with me, uh, Sister David, Mother David, we called her at the time. I asked her, you know, uh, where did you, because we had a lot of sisters in LA and I thought there's gotta be a community, you know, that I could train at and no bishop. And she said, well, she said, no, you have to come to Cornwall Heights, Pennsylvania. But she said, we do have a convent uh, in Los Angeles where you can meet the sisters. So I thought that would be pretty good. So we went over and it was very interesting because the sisters were waiting for the convent to be built. So they lived in two little houses and I would see uh, I parked the car, I had just gotten my driver's license and we had a big old Pontiac station wagon. I'm trying to parallel park this thing with no power steering, it's horrible. Anyway, finally parked it and we were watching the sisters and what would happen was they would come out the back door of the one little house. The back door of one house faced the back door of, of the other little house. So anyway, the sisters would come out this door and go back into the, the store of this other little house, then vice versa. And back. Well, I, I finally realized that their bedrooms were in this one little house, but the chapel and the dining room and everything else was in this other little house. You know, we finally went in and met the sisters and um, they did all my um, packing my trunk. We had to bring two habits. My mom and I didn't sew, so... Uh, it was Sister Anne Regina and her sister, Sister Marie Duchenne, who had taken some courses at Loyola. But Marie Duchenne was a fabulous seamstress. So she had my habits made in two days. And they told us to get this Panama cloth, which wrinkled if you looked at it. It was the most horrible, and it smelled like dead fish if you got it wet. <laughs> so she went down to the garment district in Los Angeles and got this I think it's just when Dacron and polyester start to come out. So, I mean, I could sleep in my habit and, and 
that's, I think I graduated on the 6th of June. And I, I think I was at the mother house by the, I, uh, September 8th was our entrance day. But I think I got there like on the 7th. And it was amazing because I went by train. I was only 17. Uh, and I think I really, you know, uh, I had kind of an open um, attitude, I guess, because my parents were very, very supportive. But they said, if it isn't for you, we'll send you a plane ticket. Just come back. So anyway, this is what, 55, 56 years later. But I'm saying all this to say that I, because I was out West, I was very fortunate. I spent all my almost, except for three years. I lived with Sister Catherine Chizak for two years at St. Ignatius in West Philly. Uh, I spent a year in Montgomery, Alabama. And that was the whole time that I spent in the black community. All the rest of the time was spent in, in the West. So I had almost 30 years of teaching different Indian communities. Um, I think we were, we had a, a great many, um, well, not the boarding schools. We had some boarding schools, I think two or three, but the grade schools, grammar schools, we had a lot of grammar schools that I taught in. And, and that's just about the whole story. Uh, my entrance into religious life, um, always, I've always wanted to be a sister. I just didn't know what kind. And in high school, like um, Regina, I had a sit, there was a situation in school and um, Native Americans and African Americans came up in history in a senior year. And the attitude with the kids that I was with were, who cares? So of course that sent me off into a wild rage and I was yelling at them and telling, what do you mean, who cares, blah, blah, blah. And when the bell rang, the teacher told me to sit down because you know I class had to start. Well, after that, the boys would meet me in the hall and they'd say, how? Or they, you know, they would make all kinds of signs and I'd say, it's your loss. It's your loss. That's right. So that you don't know these things. But anyway, that led me to look in the, one of the boys, Catholic boys in my, I, I went to public school. One of the Catholic boys said, why don't you look in the sign magazine? Because almost all of us had the sign magazine at the time, Catholic uh, magazine. And there was this tiny little box and it said, um, apostolate, um, oh, let me call the word. It didn't say Native American or African American, but you knew that's what it meant and the little thing to write away. So I wrote away and the dear little sister who was giving out information, gives out information and sends the, uh, the form to fill out. So I said, oh, this must be what God wants because he sent me the, the form. So I filled it all out and sent it back. And that was in April and in June, I, every day I called my father. Did it come yet? Did it come yet? And so one day when I called him at lunchtime, he said, it's here. So I said, open it up. And he opened it up and it said I was accepted. And so that's how I became a sister of the Boston Sacrament. But it really was the apostolate. I just never understood why people could not, un, could not feel or could not have compassion for two groups of people that were not be, being treated correctly. They weren't being treated the way we were treated. And so that's what really got me started. And that's how I became a sister. Once I knew that there was a congregation that did that work. Yeah, I was in uh, Philadelphia, Ma Ma um, Macon, Georgia, Phil then Philadelphia, um, on the Apache Reservation, St. Catherine's Indian School, back to Philadelphia, Louisiana, Mississippi and back to Philadelphia. <laughs> so that's it. And, and when I retired, I, because of my condition, I retired, I stayed in Mississippi and I worked for CASA, 
It's an organization that works with parents and children who have been separated because of drugs or alcohol or some situation. And I worked with uh, two children in that situation. One, the first year I worked with one, I only took one child at a time because of my condition. You know, you have to travel to the schools. You got to talk to the parents. I had to climb stairs. I mean, it was a lot. So then the second year I took the second child. And as soon as I finished, I went to court. I gave my, uh, my um, testimony to the judge and he decided that the cases were to be closed and the par- children were to return to their parents. At that point, then I called and said, I'm ready to come up. I didn't want to leave Mississippi until I closed both cases. I didn't want to hand it on to somebody else. Um, I taught school. I've taught all the grades, but third grade up to eighth grade. I've taught all of them. And when I was at the Indian school, the kids used to laugh at me and they'd say, you teach all the classes we don't like. Religion, English, and social studies. <laughs> because their way of being is different. And so I laughed. I laughed back and I said, well, I can't help it. You know, that kind of thing. But um, so I really did enjoy that. That was... Um, boarding school situation. So I had 50 girls on my floor and there were 50 girls downstairs. So we really usually started out with 100 girls. And um, I was a dorm moderator. I had to make sure that everything went well in the dorms. I talked to the girls, kept up with them to see if if there was anything bothering them, what I could do to help them with, uh, make sure they got to bed and stayed in bed. That was the big thing. The staying in bed, they'd wait till I'd fall asleep and then off they'd go, you know, as teenagers would be. And I went there twice. I went, um, the second time around was much harder. First time around, uh, we had very few problems, really very few problems. The kids didn't get into too much difficulties. But the second time around, drugs and alcohol had entered the reservation strongly. And so we had several, and I was only there those last three years, and they were very, very problematic. We had to work with, and I worked with the kids as much as I possibly could, work with the parents, but uh, it was very difficult. And then I came back to first grade, and I taught them until I kind of retired because I really couldn't stand up any longer to teach in school. And so I did parish ministry. And then finally, when I really retired, I tutored at the Catholic school in town because I enjoyed helping kids who have a hard time. 